Thank you for joining us now. Nigeria's volatile operating environment has continued to pose as a red zone to foreign investors who are ready to take the bold step investing in the country's high-risk markets. Investing in a volatile market requires a thoughtful and strategic approach. While market volatility can create a unique opportunities for growth and profit, certain market swings can also lead to significant losses. Now, according to the latest report from the National Bureau of Statistics, eight states such as Bayosa, uh, Gombe, Ebony, Jigawa, Kebi, Taraba, Yobe, and Zamfara states failed to attract any foreign investment but piled up around 194.09 billion Naira debt between 2019 and 2022. Interestingly, uh, in 2022, the combined debt of this eight state had risen to 904.47 billion naira, showing a difference of 194.09 billion naira. So let's uh, get talking on this now to assess the causes of decline in the capital inflow into the country, especially with this uh, eight state. And we have our guest joining us virtually investment banker and financial analyst Mukhtar Mohammed he joins us now virtually thank you for uh, your time again we appreciate you for coming on board always a pleasure Frank good morning yeah good morning uh, I mean let's begin this way uh, you and an investment um, analyst uh, or investment banker uh, what can you say is responsible for the declining capital inflows uh, not just in Nigeria now, but of course, if you look at this eight state, instead of in attracting uh, capital inflows into the state, uh, they, they actually, um, you know, have a combined debt or incur a combined debt almost a trillion era. Talk to us about this. Well, uh, when, when you want investors, you need to make the environment conducive for investors to come in and, uh, and, 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 and invest. And one thing investors all over the world look for is um, is uh, tax incentives and, and then um, um, rule of law and then um, also intellectual property protection. Um, if you don't have these three things, it's always very difficult to attract investors into your country. And also, for our own case, again, you have the exchange rate um, volatility, I mean, which has to do with the difference in price between the primary and the, and the official um, uh, market. So that also is not encouraging investors to come into the Nigeria market. And so when you look at all this with what the eight states are suffering, you, you should know that it's not just the eight state, even Nigeria as a nation too is suffering from things like that. Uh, the federal government as it stands now we've not uh, experienced foreign direct investment uh, has gone down to almost 97 percent so mm -hmm. definitely is a national issue but um those states you name uh when you look at their 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 uh those states and you look at what they have in terms of mineral resources uh, you tend to be worried a little because of the exclusive list that made it uh, uh, impossible for them to to manage those resources themselves, especially a state like Bayesha state should not be among them because um, it, it, it happens to be one of those states that have a lot of oil wells also, and it was supposed to attract a lot of investment in the oil and gas sector. Mm. And then when you look at um, some for a state, uh, KB state, um, and so could just they are high in solid minerals. Um, if any report, if anything is to go by the report we had over the week that the Chinese were even foreign insurgency in that part of the country for them to be able to be mining those uh, solid mineral resources without paying revenue to the government. So all these are challenges, but these are challenges that have to do with the kind of economy we run structurally, especially. Mm. Oh, okay. I, I talk to us about the implications of, of these. Um, I mean, in between 2019 and 2021, uh, how come a state as Vibua Bayesa has not been able to attract any foreign investment uh, into the state? Uh, you also mentioned the fact that Zamfara has, you know, mining potential. So, what is, is the implication? Then, secondly, how can they become more productive? How can they maximize, you know, the, some of their mineral resources to become a productive state on their own uh, without necessarily waiting for allocation from the federal government? Uh, because these are issues. Yeah. 
Uh, you see, for 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 Baesha State, you need to look at it this way. You need to look at it um, that what they have are uh, oil and gas, and oil and gas is strictly being mined by the federal government. I talked about the exclusive list, and because of the topography of that state in terms of terrain, um, a, a lot of um, oil majors that are mining crude oil in those states are not even having their offices there. They either have their 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 their, their offices in 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 Port Harcourt or they have them in Lagos. So the production up is just what you have there. You don't have a lot of staff. And so if they had their headquarters in those places or they were able, the Biasa government was able to improve their infrastructures. So uh, uh, their infrastructure and also also um, um and also security so they will have most of those headquarters located in Baesha state and so if you have those uh, headquarters located there then you begin to talk about um income tax that those companies those staff from those companies are going to be paying to the government and so that also would have boost their internet generated revenue and in turn improve their, their their revenue and so they will be able to create more employment even for their own citizens so if you ask me like a state of Baesha what should you do try to see how much you get from the federation account they get from the Federation account. They, are, they also have the fifteen percent theoretical fee fund. I mean, uh, they, they, I mean, the um, the um, resource control fund. I think something like that. And so they, they are supposed to be using those funds to build infrastructures. And then also they need to do social investment on their people. Because what we see about Nigerian government is everybody just keeps talking about physical infrastructure. Nobody is looking at the social infrastructure, which has to do with education, health. This is very, very important. For example, for our state, I think the one thing they need to do is also the same thing that the advisor need to the advisor is supposed to do also in terms of infrastructure. I don't think uh, the road networks are not that. Um, like what you have in the Baisa state because of the river and nation, the topography of that place. They are on they have some of this um, 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 infrastructure, but the challenge is that insecurity also is a major, major challenge. And unfortunately, the stands of our state government are not the one in control of um, security. So they need to really um, um, get to the federal level and see how the federal government can help them in the area of um, 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 in, in security. Now, will they be able to Crash on that. The same thing they need to do with Baisa. Once there's security, most of those mining companies that have their licenses have their offices situated in Baish, in, in, in Zamfara State. Then oh, okay. that would be it for them. Okay. Um, apart from Zamfara State and Bayosa, you have Gumbe and you also have uh, Taraba, Kebi, and Jigawa in the picture. Can, can we bring them into the conversation? Um, can we also? Uh, talk about the potentials that they have. Do they have potentials like, you know, what you have in Zamfara and Bayosa State? They do. They do. They all do have potential. If you look at Jigawa, Jigawa is even close to Kano State. Um, agriculture is one of those things. You look at Gumbi. Gumbi is close to Bauchi State. It's close to Plato State. Then you also look at tourism in Gumbi also. And also, you remember that we used to have the Yankari Game Reserve in those areas. So those are things that they, they also need to do. If you look at Taraba State, Taraba State also could be its hope of of, 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 of um, 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 Stories and also agriculture. Um, those are the things. Every every state in Nigeria has something to offer, but it's just that um, most of those people in governance in most of the states do not know how to think out of the box. So definitely, if you have something in in a, in a, in Kano state, then you make yourself a, a hub for those in terms of maybe cost of living could be cheap in Jigawa. So most yeah. of the people that are supposed to stay in Kano will come to Jigawa and stay. If if you make your, your hub better also instead of people to stay in Bauchi when there's development in Bauchi it will, it will spill over to Gumbi because you have the infrastructure also and then cost of living might be cheaper in Gumbi than us. so they need to look at the, the borders who they share borders with what are those people competitive advantage what value can Zamfara State add I mean what value can KB State what value can Chikawa State what value can Taraba State add to these uh, 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 other states and so you, you see a snowball effect of that. Mm. I, I'm aware that some of these states are also limited by the exclusive list that you talked about uh, earlier. However, we saw the government or the president assented to some views uh, which remove some you know, uh, natural resources from the exclusive leave to the concurrent. For instance, the decentralization of the power sector uh, so each state can generate their uh, you know, their own power now. They have the opportunity to do that now. So do you think they'll be able to catch in on this? 
Hello, Mr. Mataro. Can you hear me? Oh, oh, oh there. I wanted to really get that, uh, you know, point out so that we can perhaps look at that. Yes, there are limitations, but maybe uh, we should begin to talk about how they can take advantage of this, uh, uh, you know, review or some of the exclusive list that uh, were, uh, were assented to by the president um, earlier in the year. Uh, can you talk to us about that, uh, Mr. Mokhtar? Yes. I think I lost you a bit. Uh, can you come again? Oh, okay, so so I was asking you that yeah, this some of these states have limitations in terms of uh, you know exploring the you know mineral resources. Uh, uh, I mean, so, but we do know, however, that the president recently signed uh, uh, the review of some of the constitutional uh, 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 resources uh, that are being reviewed. For instance. Each state can now generate their own power, all right? So there's a decentralization of the power sector now that each state can generate uh, their own power, distribute, and can create a market for, for it. So I was asking that, yet th some of these states are limited by the exclusive list, but with this re recent development in the review of our constitutional amendment, can they take advantage of this review to, to, to create wealth for the state? Yes, they should. Um, I look at power. I, I, I mean, I don't want to go into detail of this review because, again, it comes with some major, 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 major challenge when you look at that power um, um, view. Because when you that technicality that are not easily okay. Uh, I'm not sure if. Um... Mr. Okay, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Can you hear me, Mr. Mokhtar? Technically, to work on uh, for the um, uh, okay, uh, Mr. We're having issues uh, with um, you know the floor conversation with uh, Mr. Mokhtar there. But let me quickly add this: Do you think states outside Lagos are really attractive as well? Because these are also issues. Uh, because you, some you, you should know that. Okay, C can you hear me, Mr. Mukhtar? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Oh, okay. Uh, let me quickly add this, and then why you wrap it up with this. Um, it's also an issue whether states outside Lagos are really attractive to these, uh, you know, foreign investors as well. So, do they truly have the economic potential to attract and retain investment? Um, so. I think you should talk about this as well as a wrap up now. Well, uh, <laughs> Lagos used to be the capital of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That's right. Lagos still remained the commercial capital of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So most of what Lagos is enjoying now, it has to do with what the federal government were able to put in place and then the Lagos state government improve upon it. So most of these states do not have those kind of incentives, those kind of infrastructure um, that Lagos state has. So they cannot be on the same plane when it comes to investment and retaining of investors. The only thing I think those states will need to do is to improve their uh, infrastructure uh, and then also begin to look at ease of doing business, especially the uh, Oh dear. Well, I guess uh, we will just have to end this conversation. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Mokhtar, uh, I, I, I just uh, feel we have to go uh, looking at Books the... that are ongoing now in Abuja. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mokhtar, can you hear me? Okay. Well, I, I think because of, we're pressed for time, uh, maybe we should just end it. And of course, uh, the connection is not helping matters as well. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mokhtar Mohammed, is an investment banker and financial analyst. Thank you for your time on the program today. You've been watching Business Breakfast, coming to you live from our studio. Still to come after the break for the first time in the past 60 years, there's a realistic possibility of the dollar being rivaled by another currency. And that's talking about the BRICS in a currency plan. Well, that's our conversation next, next when we return from this break. Uh, please stay with us. <laughs>